that led to share Jeremiah 12 and 2 Thessalonians 2. Um, they sort of tie into a couple dreams I had last night, this morning. I'll make a second video about the dreams and um, what the Lord revealed to me. But basically, overall, <clears throat> the Lord's showing me that the church is not ready um, to be taken. And um, I've always believed the rapture doesn't happen pre-trib anyway. But he, there's going to be a time of refining. And um, he's going to wake up the sleeping church. Okay, so <clears throat> in Jeremiah 12 here, we, we see... Righteous are you, O Lord, when I plead with you. You let me talk with you about your judgment. Why does the way of the wicked prosper? Why are those happy who deal so treacherously? You have planted them, yes, they have taken root. They grow, yes, they bear fruit. You are near in their mouth, but far from their mind. Referring to those who follow him, but <clears throat> don't obey him. Verse 3. But you, O oh Lord, you know me, you have seen me, and you have tested my heart toward you. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter, and prepare them for the day of slaughter. How long will the land mourn, and the herbs of every field wither, the beasts and birds are consumed, for the wickedness of those who dwell there, because they said he will not see our final we will he will not see our final end, meaning those who doubt that an end will come upon them. The Lord answers in verse 5, If you have run with the footmen and they have wearied you, then how can you contend with horses? And if in the land of peace in which you trusted they wearied you, then how will you do in the floodplain of the Jordan? For even your brothers, the house of your father, even they have dealt treacherously with you. Yes, they have called a multitude after you. Do not believe them, even though they speak smooth words to you. I have forsaken my house. I have left my heritage. I have given the dearly beloved of my soul into the land of her enemies. My heritage is to me like a lion in the forest. It cries out against me. Therefore, I have hated it. My heritage is to me like a speckled vulture. The vultures all around are against her. Come, assemble all the beasts of the field. Bring them to devour. Many rulers have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. They have made it desolate. Desolate it mourns to me. The whole land is made desolate because no one takes it to heart. The plunderers have come and all the desolate heights in the wilderness, on all the desolate heights in the wilderness, for the sword of the Lord shall devour from one end of the land to the other end of the land. No flesh shall have peace. They have sown wheat but reaped thorns. They have put themselves to pain, but do not profit. But be ashamed of your harvest because of the fierce anger of the Lord. I got it. Thus says the Lord God, Against all my evil neighbors who touch the inheritance which I have caused my people Israel to inherit, behold, I will pluck them out of their land and pluck out the house of Judah from among them. Then it shall be, after I have plucked them out, that I will return and have compassion on them and bring them back, everyone to his heritage and everyone to his land. And it shall be, if they will learn carefully the ways of my people, to swear by my name as the Lord lives, as they taught my people to swear by by all, then they shall be established in the midst of my people. But if they do not obey, I will utterly pluck up and destroy that nation, says the Lord. So I get the gist of what the Lord's answering him but um i looked at a couple commentaries and this one um coincided with what i was thinking it was saying <clears throat> um this is on christianity.com okay um i think yeah matthew henry's commentary so Jeremiah is complaining of the prosperity of the wicked and the heavy judgments to come upon the nation and divine mercy to them and even to the nations around it if they swear by his name, the Lord. And if not, then destruction comes, which we can see that also 
as a possibility here in America and with other nations, especially the ones that are against God's people. So right here in verses one through six, he states when we were we are most in the dark concerning God's dispensations or what how he's dealing with people, we must keep up right thoughts of God, believing that he never did the, the least wrong to any of his creatures. So we can't think the worst of the Lord. We have to believe that everything happens for a reason. Okay. And um, the God with whom we have to do knows our hearts, our, our hearts and minds towards him. He knows both the guile of the hypocrite and sincerity of the upright. Divine judgment would be, would pull the wicked out of the pasture as sheep for the slaughter. The fruitful land was be turned into barrenness for the wickedness of those who dwelt there. The Lord reproved the prophet. Okay. Um, I grieve that there should be so much evil is often mixed with peevish, peevishness on account of the trials it, it occasions us. And in this, our favored day and under our trifling difficulties, let us consider how we should behave if called to suffering like those of saints in former ages. In the middle part, <clears throat> um, in verses 7 to 13, he writes, God's people had been the dearly beloved of his soul, you know, Israel, precious in his sight, but they acted so that he gave them up to their enemy. Many professing churches become like speckled birds, presenting a mixture of religion and the world with its vain, vain fashions, pursuits, and pollutions. God's people are as men wondered at. As a speckled bird, but this people had by their own folly made themselves so. And the beasts and birds are called to prey upon them. The whole land would be made desolate, but until the judgments were actually inflicted, none of the people would lay the warning to heart. When so it took God's judgments to wake them up. When God's hand is lifted up and men will not see, they <clears throat> shall be made to feel. <clears throat> Silver and gold shall not profit in the day of the Lord's anger, and the efforts of the sinners to escape misery without repentance and works of it um, answerable thereto will end in confusion. And in the last part, verses 14 to 17, he writes, The Lord would plead the cause of his people against their evil neighbors, yet he would afterwards show mercy to those nations when they should learn true religion. This seems to look forward to the times when the fullness of the Gentiles shall come in. Those who would have their lot with God's people uh, and a last end like theirs must learn their ways and walk in them. Which goes along with 2 Thessalonians 2, which the Lord put on my heart to share. Um, <clears throat> concerning the end times and making sure that we're right with him. Um, so. Second Thessalonians 2. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time, that the Antichrist will be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. With all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they may be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the, the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So the Lord's been showing me that a lot lately, that the love of many would grow cold, and that 
um, the delusion or the uh, influence of the enemy over those especially that are not saved is going to be great. And <clears throat> even those that are lukewarm may be um, persuaded to believe the lies, um, thus the great falling away. And it's a it's the biggest spiritual battle and it'll be a physical one too once the enemy starts to persecute and um those that are following the lord so we have to make sure that we're right and ready for that and to pray without ceasing and um to be steadfast and immovable and have courage and strength um, for god to give us the power of his spirit stand against the enemy so right here verse 13 but we are bound to give thanks to god always for you brethren beloved by the lord because god from the beginning chose you for the salvation through sanctification by the spirit and belief in the truth to which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our lord jesus christ therefore brethren stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught whether by word or our epistle now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father, who loved, who has loved us and given us every everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish, establish you in every good work, word and work. <clears throat>